Hey there everyone, we hope you're having a great week so far. Just wanted to let you know that we're changing things up a little bit with this week's episode and instead of having one long extended one publishing on Friday, we're actually going to break it into two kind of shorter episodes publishing on Friday and Monday. I uh, just want to change it up a little bit and for those of you that don't have the time to watch a full one, this way you can just do it in two shorter ones. So we don't know if it's going to be permanent or not, just wanted to try it out, but let us know what you think and we hope you enjoy. Another day, another project. Uh, today we are going through in laminating what we kind of talked about before when we cut out these big door openings. Not only are we putting unidirectional fiberglass inside, basically in place of the core to give us some stiffness, we're also reinforcing above each one of the doorways. So today we're cutting out the fiberglass for that. What it's gonna end up being is um, one layer of uh, 090 bioxyl, then a layer of 45-45 double bias, then another layer of 090 bioxyl, so three stacked on top and it spreads 1.4 meters from the edge of the hull over the top of the doorway and over towards going towards the bridge deck. And this is gonna be layers on both sides of the bulkheads um, and of course both sides bulkheads, so for each, each hull too. <laughs> so right now we need to go through and cut all these pieces out. There is a nice radius taper that we have to cut into it as well. This is all gonna be fared in later, but the big idea is just giving the strength to this area so we don't have to worry about any of these problems that a lot of boats have with cracked bulkheads or anything like that. So just making it stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's what we're doing, going through, getting these bulkheads all set before we actually install them in the boat. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. imitation, the ones that I like, but they'll work. You can't always get what you want. No, apparently not. <laughs> We're getting ready to roll. Coming on a thin roller for today as well? Yes, ma'am. All right. Old trusty. A couple of knot spreaders. One out of spare, just in case. Well, while you get that ready, I will start mixing. We've got a really exciting and fun day of glassing ahead of us today, but as you can probably hear, things are a bit noisy around the tent, so we're going to just be uh, filming as we go, and then hopefully you can get a recap at the end. As future me, I can let you know that we did not, in fact, give a recap at the end of the day. Maybe it was because of the fumes. That was a joke. We wear masks. Or I was more than ready to escape to the beach with a cold beer. But either way, we're just going to walk you through this right now as we go. Just as when we had been working to glass the bridge deck back together, here on the bulkhead, Matt rolled out a bit of resin on the surface before adding the cloth. And this time, instead of using solely 45-45 double biased, we were using a combination, starting with a layer of 090 bioxyl on the bottom, a layer of the 45-45 double bias on top of that, and another layer of 090 bioxyl on the top. The combination of these cloths together will have fibers running in all directions giving us the best overall strength. Mm -hmm. 
Once the three layers were on, a touch of extra resin was added to the top to make sure there were no dry spots. And Matt would go after any air bubbles with his fin roller. Once they were out, any excess resin gets squeegeed out of the area. And lastly, a fairly dry roller is used to suck up any surplus resin on the bulkhead. Spring is finally in the air today, even though we're a few weeks technically into spring already. We've had a little cold front going through, and today is one of the first nice days we've had in so long, and it feels wonderful. Matt is actually out running air into West Marine right now because it turns out we're running out of the peroxide that we mix with our vinyl ester, and knowing how much we went through yesterday doing the first round of glassing on the bulkheads, we're definitely gonna need some more. So he's out doing that, and I'm going to vacuum up the sanding he did yesterday, put some styrene down to prep the surface, and then get to do the whole thing again. And hopefully it goes just as smooth as it did yesterday. One thing we're getting to today as we're working on the glossy side is we're adding peel ply and not only does it help with the resin ratio but it's also going to help smooth out the surface instead of kind of like the textured cloth feel from the biaxle and double bias that we're using you smooth that over the top and it gives you like a nice glassy finish so that's really going to come in handy when it's time to fare these surfaces. You ready for this? I'm ready for this. Ooh. Look at that smooth surface. exciting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> exciting. I know I am. How does it feel? Great. 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 This whole project is a matter of kind of like a sequence of trying to figure out when to do things. Uh, I think we screwed up on this one. Now, we did the extra reinforcements over the door after we had cut it out. Problem is, is now it's very difficult to try to recut this edge. Had we instead did this lamination, then cut out the door, we would have a perfectly finished edge. Um, the, the, the problem that that would have given then is with this extra thickness that we have of the fiberglass that we've added, uh, it would make routing a little bit more difficult. So it's kind of like, uh, but we tried it out on the other one up there, and I think I figured out a solution as to how to be able to see where that cutout needs to be.
Uh, what we figured out is if we use one of our lights from the camera, put that on there, and now you can actually see right where the original line was and where our extra laminations are. So now I can go through and either trace it with a pencil if I want to, or just have Jess hold this while I cut it all out. It's gonna be our plan, but it works pretty well. Um, it's still not gonna be an absolute perfect edge like it was with the router, but I think it's gonna be good enough. And especially these are gonna be covered in wood trim later, so we can hide that. out, I think the real answer was to do one side at a time. So cut the doorway first, do one side, then you can see the back side of it. Cut this piece out, then do the other side. We uh, wanted to go a little bit faster, so before each side was fully cured, we were flipping it over and actually doing the other side. That was probably wrong. Um, so one side at a time, and we would have been absolutely fine, but this worked out, this worked out okay. Did we just trap ourselves from the other? Or at least made like an interesting entrance now? Yes, it's not ergon ergonomically correct at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, it works. We're so flexible. We are. Give it another couple months, we won't go to that. Make sure to join us in a few days for part two of this episode, where we add a rope of unidirectional fiberglass to these doors to give the core surrounding the opening extra strength. But this time, we go at it with a few added tricks up our sleeves.